Welcome to the show that says for all things musicals and today you are in for a showstopper because it's all about Anne. <laughs> Alright, before we get started with the last show, and Juliet, there is life after Romeo. Get whisked away on a fabulous journey as Juliet ditches her famous ending for a fresh beginning and a second chance at life and love her way. This hilarious musical flips the script on the greatest love story ever told and asks what would happen next if Juliet didn't end it all over Romeo. Our principal cast features Juliet, Caplet, Anne Hathaway, April, William Shakespeare, Lars Dubois, May, Romeo Montague, Angelique Nurse, Francis Dubois. <laughs> Alright, it's time to start talking world about this show. And I absolutely highly recommend it. It has literally shot up to update my personal favourites. Um oh, I wish this done the West End. But anyway, um yeah, absolutely just loved it. Oh, I like how I kind of wish six was around when I was in year six, we did Tudor History. I so wish this musical had been around. Um when I used to do Jesus the English because obviously in Jesus the English you have to do uh, Romeo and Juliet um, and unfortunately for me I was stuck with the Leonardo DiCaprio film and Shakespeare in Love but uh, I would have, would have so loved this to have been around during when I did Jesus the English because I think I would have got A star I mean it's just so brilliant and what I loved about it was how this is a jukebox musical. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. So you've got all these amazing songs from various artists that, that, that are well in the charts. A lot of them were done by artists that I like. So obviously, you know, Debbie Lovato, Jesse J, Ariana Grande, Kelly Clarkson, Katy Perry. So I knew, so obviously a lot of these songs were really new. And I was interested to see how you're going to take these um, well-known chart-topping songs and incorporate them into a musical set in, you know, Shakespeare's t England. And I think they did it absolutely brilliantly well. Choreography was um, amazing. The way the songs were structured, bringing it as well, I thought, was ab I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And there's no orchestra. It's all done by a backing track. Yeah, because when I because when I went there, there was literally there's no there's literally no orchestra, so you got no con no conductor so you can you can see anything. It all was done by backing track. Now that is a completely new experience for me. Um, for a musical, I'm not saying that's the way we should we should go forward. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe one day that is how musicals will happen. But wait till I die. I mean, who knows, one day we might have musicals where it's all done by, you know, the backing track. So you've got to just basically go along with, along with it. And if you're out of time, you're out of time. Because it is very hard to sing along to a song, you know, where you've got just the backing track. I mean, when you've got an orchestra, it's easy to do. Because you, you, you know that they're there, you can tell they're there. But it's just a backing track. You've only got one trot, and if it goes wrong, you go wrong. But, so who knows, maybe that's the future. For musicals is that they'll all be done with you know just backing tracks and somebody just pressing start and stop uh maybe that's the future just wait till i die okay then do that okay wait till i've gone to the, to the other side and torturing everybody in either heaven or hell with my musical theater theater knowledge and and, and love of show tunes and then you can do that okay um it was really it was really interesting to see how how they're able to pull it off and they did. I did wonder if there were times maybe when the when the when he, when he, when, he, when he back in track was maybe a bit too loud. Maybe I don't, I was wondering. I, I, I just felt maybe maybe there were maybe a few times where I thought maybe the backing track is swallowing the the uh, the uh, the actors up a bit. Uh, I just thought maybe the backing track was maybe a little bit too loud in certain places. But it was absolutely um really um, brilliant. Um absolutely um amazing. I know it was really interesting that I don't think I've ever seen before in a musical. 
is how you've got the cast members come on the stage before we get started. Now that stage where you go, where you walk in, is absolutely brilliant. The scenery is on there. It says, "Oh my god!" Straight, straight away, I'm just like I'm blown away. We haven't even started yet. But that scenery is as gorgeous. Yeah. So the cast then starts to sort of and what's spark spark sparsely then walk onto the stage you think oh what's this what's happening is it, is it, is it pre, is it pre lash but no it's the actual cast that are taking first positions and then immediately the music's going to begin to get the first number and then we're in and I thought what I was like wow that is I don't have ever seen that before um because normally the curtain would be down you would have the curtain you, the curtain would not be raised you would be the curtain would be fully down so you would not just see Everything that's going on on the stage until we have the curtain up. But the fact you did have the curtain, but the fact the curtain was not was already raised, it was already up. You get obviously to see what likes going on in like those few moments before we begin the show, and the curtain goes up to the first number. That was really interesting, and it kind of felt, felt like wow. It, it kind of felt a bit like Disneyland. Because obviously, if you go to any Disneyland, you know their stages. They just have the sets and see we all set up, and then as soon and then eventually, you know, it begins, you know, and the cast will come up. So I thought that was really interesting. That, that's, yeah, so Angela's given me two big things I've never seen before in a musical. And I think it would be interesting to see if, there were, if, there, if that was done in another musical. Just so I could make a bit of comparison between the two. Because I thought, but actually, it, it works. But I'm just wondering if it would work for an other musical. Um, but yeah, so that's weird. Uh, obviously, I just loved you know, the idea behind it, like how the, the story. I loved how this is kind of like a, like a, a what if scenario, you know, like what happened. Obviously, Juliet did not kill herself. I thought it was really interesting. I just loved the bicker between um, Alan and Shakespeare about how to go about it. It was brilliant, and I did love some of those myths where you have them go like lights out, and it's like oh, what's happening? And then, and they're basically you now blah, 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 blah barmy there was tip on the stage it's a bit like in lot when you do lunch and role play you just out reality yeah that was that's brilliant so when you had lights out right okay <laughs> uh you know okay we go a little, a little bit of reality here that's brilliant um i think yeah there was that, that, those some of those were like oh was like oh what well, i literally the first time i was like oh what's oh what's this what's that what's happening oh and then, and then it was just, this is brilliant. Um, yeah, a lot of the characters were really, really great. They they were just like, oh my god, just so hilarious. Um, oh, I took it with Lance and the accents. I'll mention more of the cats that's a little bit, you know, wrong, but that's brilliant. Uh, a lot of these cats were really, really great. Um, apart from Romeo, I don't and I don't think we needed Romeo, but I'll mention that later on the cat section. That was brilliant. A lot of the theme was amazing. You know, the costumes were brilliant. It felt, felt very eccentric. You know, related to the timing that. Obviously, Shakespeare's would have been proud in, in England. That's really, really good. I just thought it was, yeah, it was just brilliant. Um, yeah, <laughs> I have so many you know, good things to say about this. It's just, um, I just, I just really, really, really loved it. I wasn't sure I was going to uh, feel with seeing, um, because we've all seen the movie with the old cap, haven't we? We've, we've all seen it, haven't we? Yeah, where they take modern de where they take the classic play and put it in modern and see how it's done in the 21st century now i always hated that film because they still did the whole line for line what shakespeare wrote and i'm like mm, it just doesn't work so i was wondering as it is it gonna be like that we're gonna, we're gonna have these well-known pop songs but they're gonna be thrown into shakespeare times it's gonna be like well just one great big glorified mess i'm like no please no um but it's really really i just love some of it it was brilliant. The way they decided to strip the songs was absolutely um, brilliant. And all the set design. Because a lot, because it was a lot, 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 lot more technical stuff to aspects of this show than any um, other musicals. I think all the scenery was brilliant. Um, of course, when Robert does this big entrance, that was brilliant. Um, yeah, and I think one of my favourite at one closes. Brilliant. Um, I just found it was so hilarious. It was brilliant. Um, we'll get one of the musical numbers later on. But yeah, I just 
I really, really loved it. It's a shame it's not still on the West End because this would still would still pack in the crowds night in, night out. So it's a shame that this isn't no longer, no longer in the West End. It's just no, it's just started its first big UK tour. So it's a shame it's no longer in the West End. Um, but I feel it's, I feel it, it may well, it literally may well, may well go again. So it's like it really. So yeah, it really did make me want to go and see Garthwoods. And that's and you know when you see a good show where you're like, you come away from it and like a day or two later you're going to go, oh, I really would love to see that again. So I'm really hoping that's going to tour more frequently. Because um, obviously, that's two musicals now this year that I've seen that have literally, this time last year, closed the West End. Pretty Woman, which I saw back in the end of February. That closed at the end, in the West End last year, and and Juliet that also closed West End last year. So that's two musicals this year in 2024 that I've seen that last year only just closed at the West End. Um, and I did like Pretty Woman, but I don't know, but I don't, think, but, I, um, but I don't think it did give me that feeling that Angie did. Well, like, oh yeah, must Daddy was there again. But with Angie, I'm like, I really hope this this show actually tours more frequently. Um, so, because I would love to, love to see it again, because it was absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, but this show now is definitely going to go up there as some of my favourites from all time. Because, um, and would def it's, de it's definitely up there in the list of shows that, yes, love that tours, I'm definitely going to that. Okay, so... I just absolutely loved the show. I'd highly recommend it. It was just it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, all the things. I just absolutely loved it. I mean, it was, oh, I was talking to. Oh my god, I just felt it was just so damn good. Um, yeah, it was an amazing show. And I just think you, you need to go and see it. It's just brilliant. Um, if you, uh, if you like, if like me, you love a lot of good pop songs. So if pop music's your preferred genre to listen to, then you are not going to go wrong. And they've also got some, um, it's not just current songs from the last decade. You've also got a bit of Backstreet Boys there. There's also a bit of N um, as well. So it's not completely all, no, the last 10 years. It's, it's, so it's not a lot of 10, so it's not just 10s music. Have we still worked out what's called the 2010s decade yet? We've got the 10s, 2010s. It's got a lot of, it has got a lot of 2010s music in there, but there are a couple um, of, so of, of songs in there. Like you've got, you've got a couple of Backstreet Boys in there as well. There's, there, there is a bit of a... There's, Brit there's Britney, so for you 90s kids. <laughs> there's a bit of Britney. Um, yeah, but most of the musical numbers is basically my... Generation, so from my from when I was a teen, so back to the tech in the early twenty tens, that's where a lot of the music is in. But there are one or two exceptions. You know, you got a couple of back like I said, there's some Backstreet Boys, a bit of Britney. Um there's even one song by um we've even got one song by Bon Jovi and Celine Dion. So it's not all most recent stuff, there is a couple of Blah, 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 there for, there for um, those of you who were not teens in the 2010s. So, um, yeah. There's even NSYNC as well. So, there you go. But it's mainly 2010s music. So, it's the stuff that I listened to when I was a teenager. Um, but a lot of it's, it's just such great music. And I love, a lot of the characters were really, really great. Um, yeah, and some of them I thought they were really, really great. I, I, there was a solid great lap out moments as well. I mean, I was literally trying to hold it in from time because, like, this is just got me in, this just got me in stitches. So I was like, oh, there was a lot of really great comedy in it as well. So this is just a just a great feel good musical, and I would highly would recommend it. Um, I do know it, it is. It, I do know it's only just recently this year gone to Broadway. So if I'm ever near, near Broadway, maybe I can go there. Ooh, maybe right. We'll see. We'll see. Um, oh, I just gone to Broadway this year, so 
if you, if you, so if you so if you're watching this or listening this in the states, go to Broadway. Seriously, go and see it. You are not going to regret it. You can have a wonderful time. You go and see his musical. It's absolutely brilliant. So I'd hire. But yeah, I've just got so much great things to say about the show. I mean, I really do. You are going to. Uh, I'd highly recommend you go and see it because you are absolutely going to. <laughs> Alright, we're now going to focus on the musical numbers. Now, as I mentioned, um, a lot of these songs are well-known chart toppers from the 2010s, so back when I was a teenager. Uh, there are a couple of uh, exceptions, though. Obviously, we've got some Club Britney in there. There's, one, there's a song from Bon Jovi. There's a song from Celine Dion. you got the Lens singing in there. But, it's, yeah, but it's, ma- it's mainly, you know, my teenage years. That's where a lot of this music comes from. Um, but it's absolutely brilliant so we've got a lot to get through I mean we've got a lot of musical numbers. I've got the sa- I, I have got the soundtrack it's about what 29 30 songs on there we've got a lot to get through okay so let's go in at one so at one we have larger than life I want it that way baby one more time Show me the meaning of being lonely. Domino. Show me love. Blow. I'm not a girl, not a woman. Overprotected. Confident. Teenage dream. Break free. Oops, I did it again. I kissed a girl and it's my life. Right, I'm going to try and get through as many as I possibly can because we've got a lot to get through. Um, Okay. So, Lost and Life is a bit, is a bit interesting because I mentioned obviously the way they, they start the show with the, uh, most of the cast only on the stage already. Um, it's kind of a brilliant number to just you know, get everybody introduced, you know, introduce, bring Shakespeare on stage. Um, but it kind of feels like it's just quite quick little intro numbers get started. Because we then lead to obviously I Wear It That Way, which is much more brilliant. And the way Shakespeare just keeps dabbing the quill. Because it's basically, I went that way, it's basically Aaron Shakespeare with this club, lovers tip about now. I'm like, I wish they would play this way and Shakespeare like, but no, I want it that way. I love how every time Anne tried to argue for her side. And I think from seeing the audience like, I kind of know where this is going. She, Anne's going to gonna get her way. Because otherwise, what are we doing here? We may as well just go home now. But I just love how Shakespeare's so trouble like, no, I'm the man, I'm the dominant one here, I'm in control, I'm the playwright. And I love how every time Anne tries to argue, Shakespeare then gets the quill and just dabs it. It's like, I want it that way. <laughs> but quite brilliant. It's, I find that song cringy. It's a corny song, but the way Shakespeare clears it was just brilliant. Um, brilliant. <laughs> but yeah. So... Then you get uh, Baby One More Time, and wow. Juliet makes her entrance. I'm like, wow, she can sing. And the way they did the arrangement, as well, the instrumental, to do that, you know, the beginning, the intro, before Juliet does her first lyric. That was like, woo, I'm in. Look how that's the. And then they did. It kind of made the music a bit more like Shakespearean than the instrumentals, so you could get that little flair. That was just brilliant. It's like, wow, well, I'm hooked. I'm in. I'm literally, I'm, I'm so in. Yeah, hit me. Literally. <laughs> um, I love how you could have it kind of made, made it like a bit of a. Because we know this song from Britney. It's one of Britney's iconic numbers. It might, I think it's one of her first. It's a bit of a poppy number. I love how the musical they've made it more of a sad song. It's about Juliet kind of grieving uh, and everything. So I, cre- I really loved, loved it. And the way she hits those vocals, like, woo! Yes! Girl! We're in for, for a good time. We've got, we know she can sing. Yeah. Um, show me the meaning of being lonely. Um, all I can say on this one is this is basically the first attempt at some drama, wasn't it? About how. Shakespeare's like, right, well, Romeo had a lot of lovers. So, 
It's a bit weird how you see the memorial and then you see all these lovers of colour pop up from under the casket. It's like, whoop! Like, and I'm not joking, like, oh, there's another, there's another one. There's another one. And I'm thinking, in my seat, I'm thinking, how many rabbits has his dog had? Oh, you dirty bastard. What a do dog that Romeo is. <laughs> um, yeah, some more quickly. Um, to you, Domino. And this is, of course, when you throw Anne in. It's April. <laughs> <laughs> Lights out! Oh, no, I'll save the character section. Lights on! <laughs> That's brilliant. The, 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 no, Julia, the friend, and, uh, and Angelique. And the, 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 you know, this is kind of song where they go, you know, hit free, the, the skate for all that, live their whole life. Um really let, let their hair down kind of cause it's that kind of song that Jesse J has for Domino it's, it's one of those real upbeat um uh, songs from her first album which is brilliant um yeah um <laughs> and it does kind of feel like one of those let your hair loose down it's Friday feeling songs so it's great to see you did that on stage oh now um I loved Blow I honestly did love Blow because this is when they try to get the gate crash the party. And I'm glad they went with this and not busted. Glad I crashed the wedding. Because you could use that and change the lyrics to glad I crashed the party. But I'm glad they went with blow by Kesha. And not glad I crashed the wedding by busted. Two good songs but Kesha for this situation works better than busted. Okay. Um, for me, I loved how they're just like... We are we are twenties. Like, you try to convince me. Yeah, you're not fooling me. I mean, she's definitely thirteen. Oh, sorry, fourteen. <laughs> I love how I, I was like, lights out. I am not going to a nightclub with a forty-year-old. No, you're definitely not, Anne. Because I think that's illegal. The text was like, well, they're in their twenties. Lights on! <laughs> uh, so I love how they just crash it and it. Yeah, and they just. They literally, you've got the glory wear. You've got Juliet literally on the chandelier. So, like. So, yeah, because they reference. She referenced that before we then get May's number. And I'm like, I was thinking. <gasps> Are you telling me I just missed Juliet? Do you see her? You know the number? Yep. Kind of glad we didn't get that though, because I'm not sure I could put can handle that 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 song with the high notes. Oh, Sia goes high on that number, like she actually was swinging for the chandelier. But I think she's thinking, oh my god, are you telling me I miss Juliet Street, Sia? I miss all the good bits. It's not fun, honestly. Um, yeah, because that clearly was going on when main. Francois, Frankie, what we're we gonna call him? We had a little moment. Um, but but, yeah, but blow, loved it. The glare everywhere, Chandelier swinging. The fact they were just like bossy and Anne just like being just like yeah no, far my lead yet. And that poor dorm doorman, he had no chance. I love how he does come in to try and go like. Tonight we're taking names because we don't mess around. That is an actual line of the song, but I love how he sings it to try and you know try and get the situation back on track. And I'm like, mate, you're not gonna you're not gonna get rid of them. Just go with the flow. Just roll with it. Roll with the flow. Okay? Right. And then we get a double whammy of Britney! Oh no, if all you Britney haters are watching this, you're not going to like the fact there's a double whammy of Britney. She's got three songs so far. Um, you get a double whammy of Britney with I'm not a girl, not a, yet a woman, and overprotective. Now, poor May, you've got to feel for May a lot in this show. She, May feels really confused a lot of the times, because I think they're trying to, they're trying to, you know, it's how I'm using the word they. Because we don't know if it's a, it's a boy or a girl, so I'm making use of pronouns. I'm not misgendering on this show, not way. Um, 
I love how I love how they portray someone being confused when trying to work who they are, and you get this beautiful number for you, Alette, which is a shame because you then then go to a silly kooky number with Francois and Juliet. And I, and I, I was like, wait a minute, that's not the guy. That's not the guy here who just had a googly eyes at Mel the Dazzler, is it? It better not. It better not. Oh, no, it is. Oh, oh God. Here comes the drama. Bang, bang, rip a wig, rip a weave, sashay. Oh. I didn't clock. I didn't clock at first. I didn't clock that first. Like, oh no, it is the day. I oh no, no, not a triangle, not a triangle. Lights off, William. We are not having a love triangle. Fire! <laughs> Lights out on. <sighs> wow, I thought they were completely stupid and kooky. Um, and then you go to confident. I loved it. This is basically Juliet basically telling France to have Dutch courage, go defy your, your dad. I love how she's more controllable and he's just like freaking out. But what's brilliant is they're getting instrumental and then you have Lars comes in, yeah, just having just grabbing a barmy. Then Jet Lee comes in and then they're like, <gasps> and now I'm like, Juliet, I'm like, wait, you two know each other? Tell us more, tell us more. So I love that because it's a brick. Because obviously, it's a big different artist. So I love this song. I love how, how it's full beat, loud and proud. I love Juliet being like the boss woman here. Like she's now building herself up with her confidence. And it's brilliant how it's meant uh, the, 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 the play pick, pick, the, the story picks back up. And then it's like, ooh, hello, drama! Wow. So speaking of the drama. Angelique and Lance. Why did this number have to come in literally after they've done the dirty? Because clearly it was makeup sex. Because <laughs> the two of them they obviously just had a nice bit of mm, tristing, bonking, whatever we'll call it. So they obviously doing their nights out a lot. And like the way Lars has tried to be all like, you know, manly and spread and spread eagle, I'm like, this is not no, no, there's probably children here now. Cover your eyes, please cover your eyes. Don't look at the crotch, don't look at the crotch. Eyes up front. Like, oh. And it's a bit like Carlo. Oh, chase me. It's like, it's like, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's cringy. But it is so darn funny at the same time. And I'm like, where do I look? I'm, I'm in my late twenties. Where have I spent a lot of teeth? Where am I supposed to look? Oh, 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 no. Well done though, that's a well done. That is a well done scene, but like, oh, I want to know, I want to know, uh, oh god, oh my word, that should be the point where you have to then leave the room, it's it, it, on the telly, nope, <laughs> I love the way they combine two great songs, so you've got Angelique who has Break Free, and Lance with Teenage Dream, I love how they both then do bits of the other, of the other songs as well that they don't normally, they're not supposed to do. Not. Um, two great songs. The way they combine the two together is just absolutely brilliant. So it's a bit of cringiness, a bit of awkwardness, a bit of a, ooh, where do you look? But it's a great scene. It's one of my favorite in the show. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then a quick one. Some of these numbers are actually really, really short, like this one. Um, oops, I did it again. Which happens immediately after you accept Francois's mad proposal. I just love how her and Angelique both like, oh, what have we done? And I'm like, yes, girls, what have you gone and done? <laughs> Never mind. And I, oh, I love how the end of the words, like, to Angelique, are you a little bit old still being old? And then she's like, what do you mean that for? I'm like, oh, Julia, you've just lost me some brownie points. Now, the real drama comes in I Kissed a Girl. Now, you do then get another lights off moment where Will is, is, li is literally like, oh, this is too happy. This is too lovely dubby. I want drama. I want tears. I want blood. Yes, William Shakespeare's got some serious issues in this show. We get it. 
Okay. Uh, so you can tell. So you can tell he's gonna now create drama. Now I thought it was gonna be the drama that comes at the end, the end of the act, but clearly before we get some, we get a double other drama. So you got May and Francois. And I've got no clue at this point. Like, what is the situation here? You know. And <gasps> two of them do a snog. They go to a full blown musical number. They're like, oh no, I shouldn't be. Oh no, no. Uh, uh. No. Oh, let forget it. Let's go do a full snogging session. And I'm like, <laughs> we don't need Romeo. It's already dramatic enough. But unfortunately, we do get Romeo. So we get to the end of the act, and you just tell. Shakespeare is like the cat that got the cream. He's done something. And I, like Anne, we're like, Shakespeare, what have you done? What have you done? I mean, the, the grin in his face, it's almost like, you know, anyone think you've been doing something naughty upstairs, William? You're too scared to tell mummy. <laughs> but oh my god, it's brilliant. Because he has resurrected Romeo. <laughs> and the way Romeo comes down on from the stage, so from the ceiling, it's like, I'm like, oh yeah. Because you bring it, it's like, I was like, oh no. And I like, because I can see what's happening. I'm like, oh yeah. Here we go. Here we go. But the brilliant bit is at the end. When Julia basically says, says to Ape, Alice, who as April like, April, I've been gay to this, and I'm so, so happy of it. And I can tell Alan Long's face, like, yeah, so much is happening. And whatever happens, I'll be here for you, and you will be fine. You can tell she's literally struggling to stop her green, and like, I'll oh, bring it, I'll oh, bring it, I'll oh, bring it on. And the best bit is at the end of the, end of the number where you have Juliet's realised Romeo's alive, and he then says, I'm alive, and I came up with my wife. And then she goes, oh shit! And I was like, ha <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing so hard, I actually did, actually did had a bit of a copy fit. After then he spots me down the wrong hole, so I was like, I'm laughing that bit. I was like, oh, <laughs> copy coming up. So it was fine, was ice cream was down there, it's fine. That solved the problem. But that was just brilliant. That is how you close the first act. That is how you close the first act. Absolutely brilliant. That is probably my favourite act close of all time. Right, famous for this first act. I'm going to take... There might be a few here, folks. Okay, so I'm going to have Baby One More Time. Domino. Blow. Confident. Teenage Dream Break Free. So that is actually just one number because it's kind of two. And it's my life. So that's six from the first act. Okay, so on to act two. So in act two, we have got Love Me Like You Do. Yes, from Fifty Shades. <gasps> There's none of that though, thank God. Uh, City Been Gone. Whatever. Oh no, sorry. What you want from me? Sorry, I'm not used to the slang. One more try. Problem can't fill my face. That's the way it is. Everybody, back streets back. As long as you love me, it's going to be me, stronger, shape of my heart, fucking perfect, raw, can't stop the feeling. Right, let's go for it, shall we? Right, love me like you do. Well, this is just Romeo being a pathetic, lovesick puppy. And I'm like, oh, Seriously, just stop. Ro no, I'm like, stop. Because no one's impressed. I'm, I'm not impressed. They're, the kind of, no one stays impressed. Romeo, just shut the fuck up. Alright. So, Brittany, immediately, he then gets put in his place by Juliet, who does the iconic Kelly Clarkson song, Since You've Been Gone. And I love how, because I was so team Juliet here, I'm like, go fuck yourself, Romeo. I'm not sure if I felt like that in, in school, but here now, I'm like, I'm no, Team Juliet. So I loved how Juliet was just like, give it a row. I was like, no, 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 man. You don't get to be resurrected and then think you get back in my pants. Not happening. So I just like, she's like, just 
get it in his face. Like, yeah, make sure. No way. No, uh-uh. 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 Just, yeah, you go, girl. Absolutely. Loved it. Absolutely loved it the way it was done. And oh, did he feel that at the end. Um, what you want from me is another... <sighs> right. This is May and Francois basically, like, basically asking, what do you want from me? Literally. But it's like the boat... We've got May being, like, pining after Francois. Francois like, no, I can't do this. It's like, but it's like... Even I'm, at the end of it, like, confused, confused. Like, well, what do you want from each other? Lucky? Friendship? F buddies? Still no clue! Anyway, we'll, we'll get there later, later on. Anyway, um... Yeah. Right, so, then you've got one more try. Now, this is the only original song in the show. It's written by Jesse J. And in fact, if you go on Spotify, it's not it's not on the album. But if you go on Spotify, but if you but if you stream this soundtrack on Spotify, at the end, she has recorded a version of this song herself. And it's absolutely beautiful. I will put a link to it in the episode description just so you can check that, that out and um, yeah i love because it's basically like julia and romeo having this, this duet um it's quite beautiful it's kind of one of those soppy soppy lovely wwe moments there are them moments you got the little the mood lighting the romantic scenery they're on a bit they're on a flying prop this is, this is basically Aunt Shakespeare's version of a whole new world, but less cringy and more believable. Like where would I see Aladdin? That scene? No, I'm not believing that. That's clearly we're clearly on wires. This scene? Believable. Um, because I think they were, they were flying like a, a crescent moon or something. But anyway, that was it's a really beautiful seat number, and I really felt the chemistry between the two. There's, there's still something there. But they both, but she is like, nope, not having any of it. Not having it. Yeah, it's a really beautiful number. So, yeah, so that's the only original number from this show. It's by Jessie J. And I will put a link to her version of it in the episode description to give us the details. Okay. Problem card from my face. Okay. I don't think we needed the card for my face bit because it's basically Julia and Romeo. And it's basically, it's basically like she's basically conflicted now. It's like, well, I don't want to be with Roma, but probably still does. And I love how she and her backing, backing dancers, back dancers. Um, the the choreography works brilliant. Everything you got, you got that staff of this of the num of the song. And then halfway through the problem, you then have Romeo be the lovesick puppy on his own on the side. And I actually remember watching it, but no, I'm, no, Rome, no, no. Romeo, I'm not interested in this bit. I'm going to focus my eye on Julia and her backing dancers. Because I knew, you know, because Romeo is, is literally on the, uh, uh, is at the side, but I was like, my elbow's like, right, no, I'm focusing, no, for me, the main action is over here, it's with Julia and her dancers, so I'm going to focus my eye, so I know Romeo's there, but I'm, I'm going to focus my eye level just over here, where on Julia and her dancer, because that for me is where I'm more interested in, because that way, that's where you've got the choreography, and it's brilliant choreography. So Romeo, you're just in the way. You're, you know, I think if you take the card from my face bit out, this number would still work. Um, but yeah, but I'm like, just seriously, Romeo, go the fuck away. Oh my God. You should have stayed dead. Honestly, yeah, honestly. Um. That's the way it is. Right, so we had in the first, we had Juliet got, give us a full belter. Now it's Anne Hathaway's turn. This was beautiful. And of course, this happens literally after she and William Shakespeare have just had their little balmy. Um, and it's brilliant. And then towards the end, there's even a bit towards the end where the, uh, it's Don Acapella. And oh my, did Anne belt those num those notes like w wow, jaw drop, amazing, absolutely amazing. It's like wow, she is bringing it, um, because she goes on a journey. Anne Hathaway, she re out of all of them, she goes on a journey. I'm just like, 
I'm here for it. Wow. That is wow. It feels like quite a sad song, but wow, I just feel every rotten of it. <sighs> Which is a shame, because we then go into, oh god, the kooky boy band. We've got a Backstreet Boys double whammy with, every, with everybody, Backstreet Band. We all know this one, right? We've all heard it. I was literally watching this in my sleep, just cringing. I'm like, because they've basically just been doing like, they've got the shades on. They're doing like, the kind of, like, <gasps> pop of the chest, doing the kind of, you know, lower the glasses, like, mm -hmm. I'm like, and I'm actually thinking, that's not sexy. That's not a turn on. You're not. Oh, and Charles, so you probably all got little packages. So, yeah. I just bounce. Why do boy bands think they need to do that? You know, you know what I mean? They hold like puff the chest. You know, probably undo a couple of buttons. Tell the sun glasses down. I'm thinking this is this is not sexy. All right, this is not sexy. Okay, and there are children in the audience. I know because I saw some in on where's in the foyer on the way out. So there were so there were children present. So keep all right. So stop trying to tell us all on. There's kiddies in the audience. They, we want to preserve their youths. They've got at least 10 more years before they learn about that. Anyway, um, but I was just cringing because this is not cool, it's not funny, it's not sexy, it's just give it. Uh, 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 uh. And then they try to be all romantic with that's the way it is. I'm like, no, you lost me. You lost me at the, at the first one, so no. Don't even try it. But I think that's the way it is, the car is supposed to be Juliet's entrance music. Now if I was her, or, and I was going to walk down the aisle, that's not what I would have chose. Not what I would have chose. And thankfully I don't want to answer that question. <laughs> I love my independence too much, so there you go. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Um, it's going to be me. Right, finally, Francois May. Finally, it's like we want to be a couple. I'm like, finally. Because I'm like, I cut the confusion out, guys. Tell me what is going on. And if I confess they love each other, it's like, finally. Followed up with another, finally. With Juliet basically telling her to go, fuck off. I'm like, I, I, I was like, if you don't do it here, I will do it for you. And I will have no problem giving her one quick backhander. Because I just hated Juliet. Mum was like, who the fuck does she think she is? She is. She has a poor high and mighty in a pretty frock. Hair down the bun, sunglasses, umbrella. Now that's bad luck, love. I'm like, who the fuck does she think she is? So I'm like, finally. Finally, Juliet tells her to fuck off. Finally. You get that, you're stronger. So... Two finally moments, Eero and oh, are they both as impactful? So impactful. Uh, fucking speaking of swearing, you then get fucking perfect. So Angelique basically telling you that she's gonna be okay because you know what you are? You are fucking perfect. Now I actually. Actually, I'm familiar with that song, and I don't remember hearing the sw hearing the word "fucking perfect." Can we know it's the ring, 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 ring on you. You are perfect. I've never in my life heard that you are fucking perfect. So I was quite the first time. I was like, whoa, whoa, what? Just, just, just no, there was not an F word in that. Maybe there was. It's by Pink. And we know Pink does love a good swear. You can't play her Pink songs on the radio without a little bit of a... I'll be like, oh, swear word. So, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah. And then, Raw. Perfect finale number here. Juliet finally becomes her own strong, independent woman. Um, just, actually, and I love how Shakespeare tries one more... Oh, I'm not even here for you. Ben Gilles, but then you can bring it and comes to that note. Lights out! So you can forget it well. It's over. End the show. 
the girls win. Which I think was supposed to be the point of the whole show, is that the girls win. And fuck you men. <laughs> well, we were close. We were close, but then she agrees to take him back. So we were, we were close! Anyway. But Raw is perfect. It's an absolutely brilliant way to end the show. It's so empowering. And then you get like this kind of little encore with I can't with 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 Cad's not the feeling. We know the bit the big number from Trolls, you know, that number. Uh, they all just do the, it after they've done the bows and cut calls, they just do it's a great big um encore. You know, kinda of like their version of we of Bohemian Rhapsody. So you think it's all done, dusty, you can go home, but nope. Get cut one more. Right. Favourites from Act Two. Since you've been gone. One more try. Problem can't feel my face. That's the way it is. Stronger. Raw. You can grab those. So that's six me so that's six yeah, that's six me each act. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to talk about the characters, and I'll just remind you about our number. So we've got Juliet, Anne Hathaway, also known as April, William Shakespeare, Lars Dubois, May, Romeo, Angelique, who of course is Juliet's nurse, and Francois Dubois, or as he's better known as, Frankie. Um... I'll just stick to Francois, it'll, it'll be just too confused by trying, you know, also if we do. Okay, so, in fact, I'm going to do um, May and Francois first. I'm going to do Francois first. So, Francois. He, he kind of feels a bit like he's got no backbone. You know, he's, he, he's a bit of a pushover, just let anybody walk all over him. Um... And he doesn't really seem to know what he wants, does he? I mean, he's got, he's kind of no kind of bit of a, you know, just, just jumps into anything without thinking it properly through. Like mad proposal. Like, um, and it was kind of interesting, obviously, when obviously uh, he and May had that first little googly on the dance floor. But of course, that happened before he even got to Juliet. Um, and he did kind of wonder, oh, where's it going to go? Um, and you do spend the whole minute being, well, where is this going? You know, and somebody answers on a postcard, please. Just like, what is honestly going on? Seriously, I just I've got no, I've got no clue. I've no clue. No clue. Um, but yeah. Uh, but in the end, he's able to fight face. So he actually takes the whole musical though, but he, he does in the end basically find, you know, get knows what he wants and just goes for it. Right, May. Um, I'm going to refer to May as they, because it isn't very clear if May's the boy, if with May's the girl. And it was one of those lights on moments, lights off! And I was like, hold on, May is clearly a girl's na na name. And I was like, No, 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 William, you did not go there. So, brilliantly, Anne sets the record straight. Well, who are you to say what May is and what they're feeling? What feeling? Their gender, sexuality, has got nothing to do with you. I'm like, <laughs> go, girl! Because that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, ooh, do you think you are? And he's like, well, yeah, okay, fine. Lights on! But I was like, wow. So I'm just going to refer to May as they, because you, you don't really know if is May a boy or is May a girl. And frankly, that doesn't bother me. I don't give a fuck. I did not call away at the end of the show thinking, well, is May a boy or girl? I was like, no, they're just May. That's all we need. Don't give a fuck. So I don't give a fuck if, what, if we never find out what, what, what gender May is. Don't give a fuck. Could be non binary for all we know. So there you go. Anyway, but um, I love how they portray May as you know, being like confused and like trying to, and trying to, you know, work out who they are. It's also it's also like May's discovering themselves throughout the whole um, show. Um, but and it's more confident we get into the second half, the second act. 
in the, yeah, in the second act, May is confident in what, you know, in what she wants. She's absolutely more confident in what she wants in the second, in this second. Day one, sorry, I did that. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Knew that was gonna happen. May's more confident in the second half with what they want, which is obviously his brand Um, so I thought you see a bit more growth with May in the second half than in, in the first half, but yeah. knew that was gonna happen. I knew I was gonna do the misgendering. I knew it was gonna happen at some point. No, knew it was gonna happen. Right. Let's get lover boy out of the way. Oh my god, Romeo. Right. I personally think if you take Romeo out of the production full stop, I don't think we would have noticed. I really don't. I really, really don't. Because as Anne says, you're a douche, mate. <laughs> and, and we, I love how we're like, he is not a douche. And I'm like, he is so a fucking douche. Douche is not the word I would use for him. I would use the word dickhead. Yeah. Dick, that's what I would use. I was mostly thinking, yeah, I'm with you, Anne. But that's not the word. But that's being too kind. I think dickhead would be a more better, better to try to Romeo. Because obviously he only comes in to, at the end of the second act. So at the end of the first act, sorry. At the end of the first act to set up the second act right there, caused by William. But I'm like... Whenever Romeo comes on stage, I'm like, oh my god, not him again. You're just in the way, Romeo. He literally is in the way. Like, you are not needed. Like, in one num in uh, one number... I did explain this. It's the, it's the, it's the um, problem coming up in my face number. In that number, I only focus on Juliet. And don't pay attention about the Romeo's over on the side. Because I'm like, Romeo, I, you are in the way. You are bringing this number down. You're you're bringing it down. Just So yeah, so my eye level, I just focus on Juliet. Because there's more going... Because that's where the main focus is. Romeo is just in the way. So, yes. He is so a douche. And I'm like, if he wasn't in this production, I don't think we would have noticed him at all. Because let's face it, Anne's idea was for Juliet to become her own strong, independent woman. And that was going so well until you get the I want it that way reprise and she takes him back. And I'm like, oh. What was the point? What was the point? You know, but I don't think we need Romeo at all. I think we could have done without Romeo. I think we could have done without Romeo. Really think we could have done without him. You wouldn't know if he wasn't there at all. You wouldn't notice. You wouldn't notice. Um, you wouldn't notice. So I don't really need him. I think he was just in the way. Tall, not at all. Um. Okay, I'm gonna do Lance next. Oh my god. Wow. He literally brought the comedy, Lance. Particularly at one point when William Shakespeare's putting this boy band together. And you have Romeo come on, like, yo, yeah, and this ridiculous accent. And Shakespeare's like, we're not doing accents. And then you have Lars go, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Because obviously Lars has to do this French accent the whole way through. And I applaud them for being able to do that. Um, I, I Really. But that, yeah, but Lars is kind of this kind of kooky, very, he's a little bit romantic, he's very off, full, full on, um, yeah, and he, he's just there to kind of bring the comedy, and it's, it, it, it's pure, it's pure comedy, it really, it really is, it's so full on comedy, um, yeah, tell you who also is very comical is Angelique, I loved her. But I love how her comical members are more done more subtly, you know, so it's not completely uh, full on in your face. She felt Angelique finds a way to do her comical members a bit more subtly, so you can then go, so you only appreciate a bit more. So she is just trying to be nurse, nurturing, caring nurse, uh, bigger. Because obviously, in the actual play of Juliet, Juliet does have a nurse. 
who of course does play their role in the, the production. So that's kind of what Anthony's supposed to be. But I love how in this show you get all she's just have to see her as her own character. Because in the play, the nurse is just kind of basically just a side character. Whereas in this, Anthony gets to be front and centre. And I think she's brilliant. So that then leaves us with our leading trio. I'm going to get Juliet out of the way first. Because unfortunately, she's lost a lot of brandy points. Because throughout the show, she's you know, like, yeah, love her, oh no, love her, oh, love her, oh. And by then you're like, oh. A lot of the things she does in this show, in this show is like, maybe it's going, love her, no, no more, love her, no. So unfortunately, I can't keep, consider her to be favourite character. In fact, there's no contest. I know who I'm giving it to, but I'm going to slip it in the no, 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 not there yet, not there yet. Um, so yeah, so I love Virginia how they try to portray we try to portray what should we like if obviously in the you know, in the what if scenario. I love how there's no place she's like strong headed, free spirited, you know it's like she doesn't you know, she's not never getting away. Um but it's then so yeah, in the first act, love her. Love Juliet in the first act. Cause she's just you know, free wind in her hair, you know, whole love ahead of me. Not anyone else going away. Brilliant. And then you bring, and this I blame Shakespeare for this. Then you bring douche, the douchebag into the into the scenario in that two, and then it all falls apart because she is like, well, do I go back with him? Do I not? 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 And of course, gets in and was like, well, yeah, I'm gonna take him back. And I'm like, oh, what was the point of being here? You know, what was the point? So yeah, so sadly. Julia is a character too harsh. First act, she's great. Second act, the right has gone. And I blame Shakespeare for this. Right, let's get to Shakespeare. He's clearly got some issues he needs to work on. Okay. Because there are moments where he gets a little, goes, where he goes a little bit mad, or like how when he goes like, oh, well, there's some drama. I want a tragedy. I want a lot of death. I'm like, mate, dial it down. Like, no, just dial it down a notch, all right? Just take, take it down a few, take it down a few, take it down, down a few, down a few, just a few. Just down a few. Just, okay. He does go up ties for O-T-T. -T. And he just loves to remember a bit, you know? Um, and I love how he tries to be the one in control. He's the one that's like, it's going to be my play, we're doing it my way, and the play right here, it's how we're going to do it. Uh, but you can just see he just loses control every single time. Even when he then gets to be it himself. He still has no control. So it's, it's just... It's brilliant. So I love how they try to portray him as one in charge. It is his play. But in the end, he has zero control. And then that leads us obviously to Anne Hathaway. Um, now, at first I thought... Oh my god, she's going to be the irritated one and make it all about me, 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 I said this would be for me. I'm like, please, if you go be like that, bitch, leave the room now. Because, oh my god. But actually, no. She then turns it around immediately. I'm like, Okay, it's your play. Take it away. I'll have to sit back. You go for it. I even love how she actually puts herself in it. Where, because when we meet you at friends, like, well, this is May, it's April. I'm like, hang on, I'm like, hang on a minute. Lights on. <laughs> and we was like, you cannot be in this play. And I was like, oh, yes, I bloody can. <laughs> oh yes I can Lights off <laughs> Just brilliant it's, it's, This is just It's just, just It's absolutely brilliant I mean Yeah Because uh, the last time But Anne just try and make it all about her But You kind of just got a feel for her You know Because this is not what to try and see what Anne's perspective of the whole situation between her and Will in their life But can I give Ant one piece of advice though? If you're going to put yourself in the production, 
create a full-blown backstory. Because, yeah, she got the cast name down and sus. Um, April! We're we're You know? Because that's what these kids do. Like, you know, like, I'm so dead with the, my initial. Yeah? But she keeps the backstory of her real life. So, my... So I got married to my husband William, we had these kids, and he was all that stuff. But I'm like, if I was April, and I, sorry, no, if I was Anne, and I was going to put myself in the play, not only would I come up with a character name for myself, I also would want to come up with a backstory, you know? I mean, obviously, Julia didn't twig, but just in case one does twig, then there you go. That's my piece of advice, but, but yeah, but I just loved her. I mean, first of all, oh no, this is going to be an irritating one. No, oh no, not very, no. Then merely turns it around. That is genius. Her cat's supposed to do that. We think, oh no, I'm not going to write this. And then just turns it around. We'll throw it away. That's genius. That is absolutely genius. Brilliant work. Absolutely brilliant work there. Right there. Um, yeah. So I kind of feel like Anne is kind of the star of the show. I think Anne steals the show. Now, I don't know if that was the intention. But. She literally does steal the show. And I'm actually love actually love it. I'm actually loving her for it. I think it's absolute She is quite the wild character and you are and you are not gonna be able to tame her. You're not gonna be able to tame Anne halfway. You're just not. <laughs> you you just you just can't tame Anne Anne halfway. <laughs> Oh, I'm just, yeah, I think I'm free and she really is. Right, so, who are we going to name as my favourite character? Okay, here we go. My favourite character from this show is April. Oh, sorry, I mean Anne Hathaway. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid we've got time for, but until next time, that's showtime. Lights out!